Okay, so the record is back. Now, after what we have done here, okay, let I, I can try this example one more time, uh, but it's going to be the same. Considering the horizontal displacement here, okay, if I push this load like this, uh, chances are my uh, structure will go like that, right? Perhaps like that. Okay. And it's going to be the same as uh, we have just discussed before. You will probably have this uh, displacement. You can call it delta um, D in the horizontal direction. Uh, if that is A, B, C, and D. Okay. Well, we can find a way to calculate this uh, dx. And uh, if, again, if I compare this to this, if I compare this structure to this structure, which uh, you can see uh, from what we have as a hinge at D, now I now put the, uh, oh, sorry, from what we have as a roller at D, I now put a hinge there. So simply put, now as you have seen before, now we know that uh, displacement by cos by the horizontal reaction at E must be equal and opposite to delta Dx. That's a compatibility issue as well. So it all comes out to displacement, displacement, deflection, you know, whatever. So this is the concept of the indeterminate structure. We need to turn your indeterminate structure into something determinate. And once we do that, we can calculate something. We can analyze the, that structure. What we analyze generally is this displacement. So, you know, <clears throat> I can sum this up that uh, it's an indeterminate. Oops. You have to change this into a primary structure. And as a result, analyze its displacement. So, you know, we need this. We need to be able to figure out how to analyze the displacement or the primary structure so that we can go back and solve the indeterminate because it's only after we analyze the displacement, we can create the extra equations that we need, okay? So say, uh, yeah, we use compatibility. Okay, now it's high time that we put a break on the concept and make a slight detour to take care of the calculation of the displacement. So from this uh, hour onward, for a few hours, we are going to pay attention to how we can um, calculate the uh, deflection of the uh, mini structures, okay? Now, um, 
calculation of displacement. Okay. Now uh, you have learned quite a few of uh, them yourselves in the mechanics of materials class, but generally you learn how uh, you can calculate the displacement of V. So the first method that you learn is the double integration. Okay, where you uh, write your moment equation and integrate twice, get the uh, equation for displacement. Second is, I struggle to, uh, you know, to remember its proper name, but it's called moment area. But it's the moment of the moment area. Okay. Third one, I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, I should, maybe I should change the, uh, the size of the pen, okay, because uh, some students will complain. I remember one of you have set up this for me and then I keep forgetting. Kind of too small. So, so let me rewrite again. Double integration. Uh, moment area. The third one, I doubt it. Uh, I used to teach it in this class, but I don't think it's necessary for you to know anymore. It's kind of fun to do it, but it's not necessary. Call the method of conjugate. Actually, it's pretty similar to the moment area, but uh, it's been facilitated by putting the moment diagram on your V and calculate the, the, uh, the shear and moment on your conjugate V, the beam that carries the shear force of any moment diagram, and you will get the displacement, so and so. In, it's pretty closely related to moment area. The last one. Close Wacken. Did the German pronounce the Volkswagen like that? But it's uh, VW. Oh, actually, it's Deutsche Work, not the German. Okay, um, and you know, uh, these two methods you have done extensively, uh, and this, uh, you know, perhaps you need to the first three methods. You can uh, use it, uh, use them effectively to calculate the uh, displacement V. But double integration is based on the assumption of V and the conjugate V as the name suggests for V, right? So they are not suitable for frames. The only method that uh, would be, say, very uh, Suitable for the calculation of displacement frame would be the virtual work. And trust us with Okay. Um, so we are going to focus uh, here uh, exclusively on the virtual work method. Okay. Um, the uh, Every year, you know, I have been torn between the idea of talking about the principles of virtual work in the class or not talking about them. Because every year, students will be baffled by the idea of the virtual work. Just completely. What the heck is that every year? And in the end, most of the time we use the application. We don't we don't really delve into the uh the concept of the virtual work itself. But to go into it without not talking about the concept at all it seems not right. So I'm torn every year because talk about it to talk about it and then nobody understands it, seems like a waste of time. And to not talk about it, even though it doesn't hurt at the end, 
seems something's missing. And no matter how small the number of students will be, some of you will go on and meet virtual work again in the master's level. With that in mind, I would like to, you know, just go through it a little bit, not too much, but at least you know uh, the virtual work. Okay. Before we uh, get, oh yeah, that's the first example of virtual work. So okay, I will uh, please uh, open the the handout file. Let's go to this. You know? Yeah, that's virtual work. External virtual. That is, yeah, that's uh, we, we have the little short note of the uh, can you get me if you want to read it. Okay, here, look at the year 1717. Here is uh, 2022, right? So it's been 305. Years. 3 or 5 years now when John Bernoulli presented the method of virtual work to our BC little world right now virtual means not real virtual means uh, imaginary okay so how about that one day you know you lie down on the ground, look at the apple tree and the apple and, and the apple uh falls, right? And then oh okay, here comes the uh law of motion. Okay. So maybe John fell asleep and imagined the force, right? And then he said, May the force be with you. Uh, not with you, but he said, okay, you could use the imaginary force. On the structure and the solve something with the principle of conservation of energy. With that, this is your universal equation. External work, you need to make use of that with the imaginary form. Okay? So, external work is the work that you know, it's external. And let's say you can have the external virtual work. Your imaginary work, like this, put on your uh, structure. And your structure will deform according to the actual load, right? So you have the virtual and then you have the actual. The actual will cause your structure to move, but then you, you just sneak in and attach this little virtual work on it. And the virtual work, I'm sorry, the virtual load on it. Since this virtual load will travel along with your structure. And this displacement actually is caused by the actual load. So when your structure moves or displaces, it's kind of a cool word, you know, you know what it means? Displace, you know, you change the place. One place to another, they, they call it displacement, something like that. So, when your structure moves or displaces, and when you attach this imaginary little load with it, this load will move along with your structure and therefore creating work. So, that's the idea of the work. Okay, and this is the, the, the principal idea where I really don't want to get into it because you know the the the, the work starts from zero to this to P and so on and so on. So anyway, uh, generally you can say uh, there it's come from uh, integration and so on and so on. But anyway, let's say if we have imaginary attached to the structure and the structure moves, that imaginary load will have work because work is equal to the distance that your force travels. So whether or not it's actual or virtual, you know, once the displacement occurs, once your structure displaces, we have work. 
Okay. Now internal. Let's say when you have the force, external force, now we talk about the normal force. This force will invariably create stress. Whenever you have force, you have stress. Okay. And stress, you can look at it as, as some kind of force as well, because when you, let's say, if you have a structure like this, sorry. You have the force internally, or you can just look at this as your structure will have deformation. It will deform. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I just choose the place where you can't see, right? Okay, here. Let's say if this it, it's the uh, axle force like that. When you pull the rod, that is the force, right? And so, how much does your rod this place? How much? That, right? You remember that? It's Hooke's law. If you pull it by the force end like this, the display uh, here, the strain is PL over AE, right? Or try to be consistent with myself a little bit. So to get the uh, energy, you multiply force with this place, which is a strain. So that you can have uh, work, but a half is there just to recognize that your force gradually begins from zero, okay? So from the, the integration and the moment is the same thing. Now, that's such a rough idea of the virtual world. You know? We can calculate the internal force which is the, the force, you know, travels along with the strain inside. And we can calculate the external force. I'm sorry, I just keep messing up the word. We can calculate internal energy. It's more like it, not internal work, okay? Which is the, the, the force traveling along with the strain. And then we can calculate the external work, which is the imaginary force. If you put the, the virtual there, traveling along the actual displacement of your uh, structure, okay? So now we put that into use. Let's say the, if we subject the structure to the plug P, we can always use the virtual work to calculate external work and the internal work and uh, you know, put them into the energy conservation uh, equation. Okay, so what's the use of that? First of all, here, and this is uh, exactly as I say, if you put the virtual work here, and when your structure displaces with the distance, maybe say D, you will have the external virtual work, okay? is equal to that displacement multiplied by the filter. Remember that this unit load is a uh, virtual, it's not real, it's imaginary. So this external work is also what we call the virtual work, it's not the real work. See, that's uh, explained here. The structure will deform because of the actual load and therefore the virtual load attached will have the external work. Okay, so the virtual load multiplied by the displacement here 
is the external world. But then again, this is the virtual world concept. When you put the virtual world on your structure, put a pause on it, so your structure will respond. So the internal world responding to the application of the unit load, the unit virtual load. It's called internal response. It is a virtual load as well because it responds to the external virtual load. So that becomes the internal force responding to the load, uh, virtual load. But this load will have work because it travels with the actual internal displacement where it is applied. So as much as I can see it, I believe that you are pretty muddy about it because now we have the virtual load applied outside. Okay, let's try to dry screen. You have the structure and then you apply the virtual load. This virtual load will travel with the displacement of the, stru the, the structure outside. So this becomes the external work. But when you apply this, there will be the internal response. To this unit load outside, the internal response is a virtual load as well, because the, the, this external one is virtual, but the internal is also virtual. So this work, this internal work comes from the fact that this internal response also travel with the internal displacement, okay? Displacement, okay? So now in order, because external work is a big picture, you apply the unit load outside. And this one cuts like, think about both units. Attach the external load, unit uh, virtual, outside. And then when you're inside the structure move, this imaginary actual, uh, sorry, this imaginary unit load moves along the structure. So that's external work. Very easy to get. But once you attach this uh, unit load, your structure will have to find equilibrium based on this new virtual load application. And the internal response will be, you know, everywhere. It's the stress. So it's everywhere. Now this internal response will have work because they will travel with the internal displacement. So it sounds like, you know, you have a lot of small things going on internally. And you need to put them together so that you have internal response and that's general IT. So you know the best way to explain it is to go to the very simple system that we call trust. Okay? Trust deflection. Okay. I will try to um draw something and then I'll come back to this. Okay. So give me, I'll put the microphone down a little bit. I promise not to speak much during the period, okay? Okay, let's say I, have the trust. Look like a trust. Not really. We have to have this too, right? Okay. So that's a trust system. And this is my system with the load. Okay. So you know that this trust will deform and it will have this place. So suppose I want to know how much this displacement is. This will be the displacement that the trust will have for sure after it is 
carrying this to be, right? So if I want to know this, I will just attach this imaginary lip here. This is my imaginary equal to one. I attach that. So when the trust actually deforms, this unit imaginary load will move, will travel along with the trust with the distance equal to that green delta, right? So very easily, the external work is going to be equal to this virtual imaginary load multiply by the distance. And this load is imaginary, so it's virtual. So we call it virtual work. It's not real work. This is external virtual work because the load is virtual. So when you, you can see, this load is equal to one. It's imaginary. We know it's equal to one. This displacement is something we do not know. We want to know. So we place this virtual load right where we want to know the displacement in the direction that we want to know so that we have work in that direction. If you want to know vertical displacement, you cannot place horizontal load. Right? It, uh, work is scalar. Hold on, right? Right? Scalar. Right? So you need to have the two vectors in the same direction. If you place the load in the direction perpendicular to your displacement, you have zero work, it's useless. So many, some, not many, some students still cannot get this concept. You want to calculate displacement, your virtual load must be placed at that location in that direction. So now this is your external uh, What about internal? Let me uh, do this again. Oh, it's wood. May not look very similar to the first one. I think, but it's more beautiful, okay? <laughs> okay. So now we put this imaginary load on your truss so that, you know, it can travel along with the actual displacement. Say virtual, actual. Now, if I put the unit load there, would your trust have internal forces? Yes, right? So that means um, I can say, this is going to be the uh, tension. Correct? Uh, and that's gonna be, uh, Really? Mm, probably that's uh, no tension as well, right? Yeah, kind of strange. Uh, anyway, um, whatever that is, okay. Seems a bit weird to me. Uh, reaction here, reaction. So that better be compression. So it's uh, really? it's a bit sick. Anyway, uh, that's a uh, should be compression. So that better be tension, maybe. 
Wait, let's try to get it done. So my hair doesn't work properly. But did we have the unit cost? Yeah, this better be. It has to go up, right? Otherwise, how can you have your sigma fy, correct? This cannot be compression. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'll, I'll figure this out uh, in, in my good time. I'm confused. Why am I going to be? Anyway, uh, they will have internal responses. Anyway, I'm, I'm not going to uh, spend more time with it. it Maybe the uh, directions are wrong. These are internal responses. So let's put some name on it. Okay, let's call this. Um, Mm, I don't really like it. Annoy me. Uh, you got, you got a phone call. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that looks better. Okay. So now. These internal responses, let's say, I'm going to call this maybe, uh, we use N before, right? Let's say this is N, let's call this N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, and so on. Now, this N1 can be achieved by, you know, analyzing this trust based on the virtual load, correct? So now this becomes the internal response. But these internal responses is caused by the fact that we apply the virtual load to the structure. So these responses are also imaginary. They are virtual as well. They travel. How much? Each one of them will travel according to the displacement of each member in the system. Remember, if you have the actual system like this, this member perhaps is elongated or shortened by the fact that your trust has the two P's acting on it. So this becomes what we call the, let me go back and let's see the name. Okay, so that uh, you don't get confused in the end. Yeah, okay. Okay, this is displacement. caused by actual load. Um, yeah. Okay, I can uh, maybe call this delta one, belongs to a uh, one. So the internal virtual work done by this member is going to be equal to N1, the internal work is going to be equal to N1 
multiplied by delta one. Okay, but then we have so many members. For the internal work, you must sum up every member that I'm going to use the word constitute, but that's too much, right? So every member that is part of your structure. Okay, so that means I have to uh, add them all up. And we have member, uh, member here, number two, that's N2. It has to be multiplied by the uh, displacement the, or the deformation of member number two here. Okay. And then the deformation of member number three should be multiplied by N3. Multiply by that until the very last one of them. How many have? How many, have? How many did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I suppose. And seven multiply by. Uh, the deformation of member seven. But that's internal work. See, external work is just the work of the entire system. You can see that here, you place the imaginary load at the location you want to know displacement in the same direction. So this work is equal to the load itself multiplied by the actual deformation of the structure, which we want to know. We don't know yet. So that is, that's the external work. However, when we place the imaginary load, our structure must come into the new equilibrium under the virtual load. And these internal forces, N1, through N7 are the responses to the fact that we apply the imaginary load. So they become the internal virtual load. Here, as a result, the internal virtual work is equal to these internal virtual loads multiplied by the actual displacement of each member. Okay, so now this is essentially this equation. You are writing something down? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll freeze it here for a minute. Any question? Yeah, of course, you should put the uh, something around it. This is the internal work. So now we have everything we need to obtain the displacement of the trust very easily. Okay. So let me, uh, nobody says anything. So let me go back up to this equation in the handout. You see that is exactly what it looks like. The virtual is the virtual load external. This is your target. You want to know the displacement, okay? And here, because you apply the uh, virtual load, you have the internal response due to this. Okay, and then the work, the internal virtual work is calculated by, you know, uh, finding the work of each internal response 
So this is not true. So see, uh, that's the concept. Now, why does it look like that? So let us go back to this. Okay, here. When you are under the actual load condition, of course, when you have the actual load, you can calculate your force, your internal forces of the truss, right? Corresponding to the actual load as well. So that is the N1. Maybe I should use this as a small N, but anyway. Um, so you have to recognize the difference by the color, okay? N1 here is the uh, internal response of member number one due to actual load. And you have N2, N3, and so on and so forth. So if the blue N1 is the internal response to the actual load, you know the force. So it means you can calculate the displacement. So the actual uh, deformation or displacement of your member number one is equal to N1 PL over AE, remember? That is the deformation of your member number one. The difference is that this N is the uh, response to actual. This internal response, this is response to virtual. So when we talk about work, we can expand this equation further because now you have the force corresponding to the virtual and multiplied by the actual deformation of the member, which is this one. I don't put one at E because generally we don't, we're not crazy enough to change the material around with one truss, right? So that is in fact what it looks like for the um, internal virtual work of one member that is part of the trust. And we can expand this. Now this is your virtual response multiplied by actual deformation of your member. virtual action. Wow, right on cue, right on time. Um, this is the concept. If you think about the fact that John Bernoulli dreamt about this 305 years ago, But the guy didn't have the board by phone, so he was uh, he had a little free time, right? Uh, but you know, this is one of the topics that I really like because it, it amazes me how could a person come up with the concept like that? Put the imaginary stuff on the structure so that he could create the world and then just internal and external you know, put them in the uh, energy conservation equation and voila, we have the deflection. Wow, man. Found that. Never, 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 never cease to amaze me. You know, I probably hate it uh, the same way you do now, you know, <laughs> when I was your age, but now, it's hard to believe that I, I find the real beauty in this. Just you, you just have to admire the guy. You know, 
on his own free time after lunch, maybe <laughs> just came up with this. Wow, I, I, I'd rather read uh, literature. <laughs> no, he, he'd rather discover this. So I think there is no better way to, to, to put this uh, to a uh, good demonstration than to see examples. So we will continue on with the examples next week, you know, the day before we have the small holiday again, right? But that's a concept. And when you see this expansion, you know why we have this uh, equation here, okay? Oh. Let's change the color. Maybe this. See? One is actual, one is virtual. You can see, uh, maybe I are trying to put things in the That's the uh, actual uh, deformation, right? Multiply by the uh, virtual internal response. Okay, and that's. We have a sigma point, it means that you have to sum up every member uh, work to give you the complete internal work of the system. Okay, so that's it for today. Is there any question? We will continue on with the examples uh, next week. So I think it's okay that we uh, don't have the uh, active sessions uh, tomorrow uh, due to the fact we have a crazy little thing called uh, exam. Okay. So, is there any question? I know it. So, I'm going to stop the record now.